Hey guys, everything new under the sun. This is a bit of an economic update. We're going to take a look at a bunch of headlines. I'm not going to get uh, incredibly in-depth into this, but I want to bring you up to date on some stuff that's happening. So the cornerstone of uh, the world's reserve currency being the U.S. dollar is what is called the petrodollar. And the petrodollar is an agreement by several nations in the Middle East and the U.S. <clears throat> and other countries that uh, barrels of oil will be sold in U.S. dollars, uh, thereby supporting and backing the U.S. dollar, which is a fiat currency system, where, you know, it's worthless otherwise outside of any confidence that, uh, that people have in it. This, this results in um, the U.S. dollar being the world reserve currency. And this is the only reason why the U.S. can print money out of thin air and continue to uh, create debt and keep uh, you know, civilization in the U.S. going um, by all this uh, debt, which is completely unsustainable. Uh, it's via this petrodollar. So when this petrodollar starts to collapse, um, you know that the economic collapse is very near. And indeed, that's what we're seeing. This is a, a huge article. ZeroHedge.com, in historic decision, Qatar unexpectedly says it will quit OPEC uh, January 1st. Now, this isn't necessarily about uh, the petrodollar, but certainly OPEC supports uh, the petrodollar, and in general, as you have these nations moving away from using the U.S. dollars, the uh, the uh, the trading currency, the the buy sell currency of uh, barrels of oil, uh, you have uh, uh, indication that the economic collapse is near. Just days before the cartel is due to meet in Vienna for what could be another historic meeting, OPEC is dissolving right before our very eyes as a perceived U.S. influence over Saudi Arabia has strained ties within the bloc. Um, this increasingly problematic perception that Saudi Arabia is accelerating production to appease Trump, um, um, and this is uh, to uh, lower uh, the cost of the barrel of oil because they want to decrease it because the barrel of, uh, barrels of oil is cheap right now, and subsequently that the entire bloc's policy is now uh, subject to undue U.S. influence, uh, and, and it has reportedly brought several OPEC members to the verge of mutiny. So there's issues with uh, with OPEC, the petrodollar, countries getting out, deciding to move away from the U.S. as the influencer. They don't want U.S. influencing uh, Middle East politics or, or um, you know, how much money uh, they make. A similar story uh, in Canada here is um, that Alberta um, is uh, ordering an unprecedented oil output cut because of the the crashing prices they want to increase <clears throat> the price of oil so they they want to cut their own oil production while just a few hundred miles south uh, WTI is flirting with the year a uh, one year low price of fifty dollars a barrel Canada's oil producing hub Alberta would be ecstatic to have its oil trade at anything even remotely close to this level as reported recently the article writer says Canadian oil producers are in an increasingly tough predicament with high and increasing oil demand around the globe over the last year. Canadian oil production has increased accordingly. All of this is simple and predictable economics, but in the process, Canadian oil had, uh, hit a massive roadblock. Producers have the supply, and they have more than enough uh, demand, but they don't have the means to make the connection. Canadian export pipelines simply don't have the capacity to keep up with either the supply or the demand. So they want to they wanna cut... Uh, oil supply, oil, oil um, you know, creation, um, the uh, oil sands, the getting oil out of the oil sands um, to combat the uh, the falling prices of oil. So uh, record low oil prices um, around the world, and, and some countries like it. Uh, some some countries don't. Obviously, the oil producers don't like um, that. Uh, Saudi Arabia came out and said they want to cut the barrels of oil to get the price back up. And so there's a lot of stuff going on in the oil industry, and and so as the price of oil goes, so does the economy in many ways. Um, when when oil prices are high, the economy is flying because that means all these companies that sell oil are making lots of profit. Um, when oil prices are, prices are low, that usually means uh, a recession or some kind of uh, economic trouble is either on the way or already here. Um, so what's happening with the rest of the world uh, economically? Well, there's uh, Deutsche Bank. Deutsche Bank is in the news. They've been in the news for years now. This article is from ZeroHedge.com via Greg Hunter's USA Watchdog. Deutsche Bank crimes could trigger next global crisis. So there, uh, if Deutsche Bank goes down, they're a massive bank. 
uh, in Germany, and they could bring down uh, the rest of the world. All we need is a trigger event. There is so much uh, leverage there and so much debt with Deutsche Bank that this could trigger the economic collapse. Deutsche Bank poses what is called National Champion Bank as uh, and the largest bank by far in Germany, but it's actually the largest criminal enterprise in Germany. It's going. It goes on. It is insane that we allow Deutsche Bank to go from fraud to fraud to fraud. Basically, they're too big to fail, and that's why they're allowed to do it. They cheat on everything else you could possibly imagine, and typically they are getting caught, which is also not a very good sign in terms of their competence. Even as thieves, even in the United States, there has been uh, reluctance to crack down on Deutsche Bank. Why? Because if they take Deutsche Bank down, that could bring the whole economy down because Deutsche Bank is so leveraged and, and uh, is seen as the biggest bank in, in Europe, basically. Um, and that could bring, uh, that could trigger the economic collapse. When the New York commissioner tried to crack down the office of the com comptroller of the currency, the premier banking regulator actually sought to impede it. He disparaged New York folks and said there isn't, uh, there really wasn't that big of problems and such, and all of that proved to be lies, it says. Deutsche Bank was raided by German regulators last week uh, on more allegations of fraud. So uh, why is this a big deal? Well, Deutsche Bank is an epitome of the too big to fail policy. They're too big to fail, so no one wants to bring them down. Too big to fail means that they could trigger the economic collapse if they were brought down. It says, so it will never be allowed to fail. Regulars will, regulators will not be allowed to regulate them properly. Professor Black says, why you should care is Deutsche Bank impedes effective regulation everywhere and because God only knows the next thing they are going to do. This is going to continue until something dramatic changes, i.e. an economic collapse. Everything they, every, Eventually, it says, they can cause the next crisis. There will be a bailout in these circumstances, but that could trigger another economic crisis, it says. That, that is one uh, potential source of the next recession. And you can see lots of peace, people warning that there are signs that a serious recession is pretty likely relatively soon. Many of people are calling uh, that it's the, the, it's coming. It's already coming. We are heading into it, if not already in the next recession. And that's why there's been a bit of a halt on uh, interest rates, I I interest rate increases uh, by the Federal Reserve because they kind of see this coming. It says um, the whole system weakens itself because it gets caught in this big lie that says we have to pretend that Deutsche Bank is a bank instead of a criminal enterprise. Again, they don't want to trigger an economic collapse, and that's why they don't want to go hard against Deutsche Bank. Um, where there is fraud, massive leveraging, all sorts of trouble. Um, they are in so much debt. Uh, and and it, hu uh, the significant part is that they're uh, connected to so many other banks. You can see the image there, Deutsche Bank in the center, and all the other banks they're connected to. Bank of China, Citigroup, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, Goldman Sachs are connected to all these other banks. If Deutsche Bank goes down, all the other ones start going down in a cascade, um, catastrophic, uh, economic collapse uh, crisis and they will all go down once Deutsche Bank goes down and that's why they're not going hard against Deutsche Bank they're just giving little slaps on the wrist they're not ready for the economy to crash no country uh, is necessarily uh, wanting the economy to crash unless they want to uh, trigger World War III to become the next world superpower China and Russia may have eyes on that sort of thing but an economic collapse would hurt everybody involved so no country really wants to trigger it because that means their country is going to have a significant trouble as well. This is another reason why China and Russia are stockpiling gold, because they know when they, when it does come, and they know it's coming soon, um, that the person, the country, historically with the most gold, is the one that comes out on top as the next world superpower. What they may not know is Bible prophecy is being fulfilled, and uh, the next um, world superpower will be a global government, um, but uh, they still have eyes and sights on becoming the next world superpower. As Deutsche Bank takeover speculation intensifies, here are a look at the troubled bank's options. So there's um, uh, takeover of Deutsche Bank, buyouts, mergers, um, all these things. Um, prosecutors revealed uh, they were investigating at least two employees in the bank's wealth management unit for allegedly helping customers set up accounts in offshore tax shelters and helping crimin criminals launder their ill gotten gains, allegations that prosecutors said were inspired by the infamous Panama Papers, so all sorts of legal troubles, but again, no one wants to uh, make a lot of waves about Deutsche Bank uh, because that would bring down the world economy and nobody's ready for that, nobody really wants that, uh, but that's coming, it's inevitable, 
um, the markets will write, uh, the, the free market will write itself. Uh, but you have this Deutsche Bank issue, uh, and Deutsche Bank's been in the news for several, several years, um, and they will cause, likely, the next uh, economic collapse uh, of the world, and it's going to sweep around the world. It's going to take all Western nations out of uh, any significant end-time Bible prophecy um, play. Um, they are not mentioned in any time any end time Bible prophecy in any significant sense. So if Isaiah 17 is uh, going to happen, the destruction of Damascus, if Ezekiel 38, 39 is going to happen, um, God may God war. Basically, you 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 need uh, an economic collapse to happen because really that's the only thing that's going to take all Western nations out of the picture once and for all in one fell swoop. So I think I think that's exactly what uh, God has planned. That's my speculation, anyways. Um, that an economic collapse comes first, takes out all the Western nations, and then end-time Bible prophecy uh, will start um, uh, falling like dominoes, one right after the other, and we will move quickly into the last days in the seven-year tribulation. I think we're about two and a half years away from the seven-year tribulation, which I think starts in 2021, um, and um, the end of days is 2028, the end of 6,000 years of man. So I think the economic collapse, collapse is the next is going to happen in the next month. I I don't know. I don't think so. Um, is it going to happen over the next two years? I actually do believe that that is coming down the pipe. Once the economic collapse happens, happens all the other prophecies will start happening very rapidly. And at that point in time, you won't have time to be prepared. Be prepared now. First, recognize Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Ask Him into your heart. He died 2,000 years ago for my sin, and He died for your sin. He wants you to recognize Him as Savior and be with Him in eternity and when you die. And you just need to ask Him into your heart, ask Him for forgiveness of your sin. Beyond that, you need to be like Joseph in Egypt. Store up in the seven good years. We're, in, we're at the end of seven good years right now. We're going, to be, we're going to start heading into the seven bad years, which you know would obviously start with the start of the seven year tribulation. And so you need to be prepared. If we are to go through that, at least through some of that, even before the seven year tribulation officially starts, we're going to need some food, some water, some provisions. Um, God gave us a brain, and he want, expects, expects us to be wise, just like Joseph was in Egypt. When the seven good years occurred, he stored up food. So when the seven bad years came, he had food um, to provide to himself and to his neighbors and to be a witness amongst the nations that Bible prophecy was being fulfilled and that God gave us all the wisdom, the Christians who were paying attention, um, to be able to store up and to be able to have some provisions for those um, who are having trouble uh, in those days. So that's the economic update. There's a lot of stuff going on. I could spend a lot more time on it. Uh, but these things are significant uh, in the economic uh, space. I think that's the next uh, shoe to fall, really, in the world. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll leave there, and we'll see you guys in the next video.